There goes the chain. I wonder if that has internal gear hubs. Hey guys, bike blogger here. On my way home from work. Woo. Feels wonderful out. It's June, uh, June 2 maybe? Feels really nice. Anyway, I wanted to talk about internal gear hubs tonight. I've been playing around with the idea of maybe converting my single speed into multi-speed, my bicycle, maybe, but the easiest way of doing it is just get a new rear wheel with a uh, internal gear hub. Um, thing is, I just really do like single speed so much. 19 miles, 20 miles an hour. So simple. Except for climbing hills. <laughs> uh, so, we'll see. I got a couple different ideas. Um, about converting it. Anyway, I want to talk about internal gear hubs. Uh, there's the Shimano Nexus, the Shimano Alfini or Alfine or I know how to pronounce it. There's the uh, there's some Sturmy Archer internal gear hubs, including the Kick Shift. The Kick Shift particularly interests me. The two speed without the coaster brake. Basically what it is, is to change gears between the two different gears, you back pedal, like, boy, it's a little weird. I just did it right now. I'm not used to back pedaling. It's a little easier, I think, on a upright uh, sort of position, sort of a bicycle. Um, you know, maybe with flat bars rather than leaning over. But we'll see. It's just an idea. It looks pretty cool. I'll have a link below in the description. Let's go up this way. Like it's still open. I'm not looking forward to the day when they close this off. I know it's coming because uh, they're getting approval for building a large property and I'm sure a large parking lot with it will come a lot of traffic. Eventually, we'll see. We'll see what actually pans out. <laughs> Depends on whether the developer gets the loan from the bank or not, I guess, huh? This economy. Yeah, there's still geese. Let's slow down a second. And geese like to hang out over here. Some geese over there. I don't really know why. I guess there's a, some puddles, but it's not really a lake or anything back here. These vacant lots. Anyway, internal gear hubs. Yeah, there's one that's pretty interesting. Uh, you can get on, uh, what is it, Kickstarter or Indiegogo or something. It's called FNEO. Ethneo, uh, something like that. Gearbox. It's three gears within your crank, and then you do have a shifter, uh, but it's all you know, pretty well integrated, and it is also an internal gear hub, planetary gearing sort of a system with a sun and planets and one, whatnot. Let's just cut back this way, changing things up a little. And uh, <clears throat> and then there's uh, there's a couple other ones. There's the uh, SRAM Automax. It's like almost an automatic, completely automatic transmission sort of a deal. Because that's what the uh, epicyclic or whatever it's called gearing is. It's sort of uh, the basis technology design for automatic transmission in cars. So, obviously, 
The main negative with them is they weigh a lot. They'll add a couple pounds, up to three pounds maybe, to your bicycle, which if you have a heavy bike anyway, commuter, uh, I'm not really riding a heavy bike. I, uh, some, some of my commuter bikes are actually pretty darn light because I travel light because I live pretty close to work, so I don't feel the need to carry a lot of things. But anyway, you may not even notice that sort of extra weight, but the cost involved, you know, you gotta buy a new uh, rear wheel and those aren't cheap. Uh, or if you have one lying around or if you wanna convert one, you can relace the spokes yourself as long as uh, it's the same size wheel and the hub flange diameter and spoke holes or whatever all the same you could reuse the spokes uh, although I don't really I wouldn't really recommend reusing spokes when building a wheel unless you know the history of those spokes like they've never been bent and uh, and you have uh, pretty good knowledge that you know they haven't been really used that much and if you do reuse spokes you should copy the the spoke pattern from before. Here goes the chain. I wonder if that has internal gear hubs. Anyway, uh, it's a really interesting technology. I mean, the old pulley and cog derailleur system seems so, I don't know, outdated. However, it is simple. I like simple, so it's pretty efficient, mechanically speaking, from an engineering standpoint, but uh, really once you start speeding up though, even with weight, once you start speeding up, you know, you get past 15 miles per hour or something, the main thing that's going to affect your efficiency is air resistance and mainly frontal area of your body. So if you really want to gain efficiency, you got to get Gotta get low. Get underneath all those air molecules. Okay, let's be careful here. Going to let that guy go. We're gonna sneak in back behind him here, real quick. Let's get to the stoplight. Very good. No problemo. Yeah, I don't know. I was in a daze in one of my past videos. I was in like a, a turning lane. And uh, I think I ended up going straight through the intersection. You know, some of these long work days, you know. When you're on a bicycle, it's weird. It's like, you know, I don't really want to say it, but the streets are sort of my playground. Uh, because the streets are ridiculously wide for a bicycle, which is why you can tend to ride to the right uh, when you're traveling in the right, or the left when you're traveling left, depending on where you're living, what country you live in, which side of the road people ride on. Um, so, anyway, internal gear hubs. Let's see what else. There's a there's another one. It's sort of expensive from. Uh, Switzerland. It's also a crank arm uh, internal gear hub. Sort of similar to the kick shift in that it's two, only two gears, but it also does not require the, uh, I was talking about the Sturmey Arch Archer kick shift. It also does not require cables or shifters. Um, and on that one, you, uh, you just use like your heel of your foot and you you kick the side of the crank. There's like a button on each side. I think the button on the right is an upshift and a button on the left is a downshift. I'm not certain. But it's expensive. You know, we're talking multiple hundreds of dollars. It's a parent with a, a kid, so we're not gonna go that way. Let's go this way. Parent with a stroller. Bike blogger doesn't want to scare scare little kids out of riding bicycles and grow up to be uh, 
truck drivers. There's nothing wrong with truck drivers. If you're a truck driver uh, and you can, take your bike with you. Those cabins are pretty big in those semis and you know, you got a chance, go for a ride. <clears throat> Hockey. All right. Hmm. I'm going to go straight. Bugs. Anyway, there's that parent with a stroller to the left. Um, internal gear hubs. What else is there to say, really? They're, you know, the positives to them is, uh, you know, they're relatively maintenance free. They're protected from the elements. So not only do you not have to really tune them much, you don't have to worry about riding in, uh, I don't know, the snow and the rain. And uh, a big plus is that because they're, you know, they're not old fashioned, uh, you can change gears by just sitting at a stoplight without even moving. Anyway, so we'll see. I'm a single speed freak. I love my single speed bikes. Okay, should have signaled there. So I already started off though. <clears throat> so I'll have more information in the description below about internal gear hubs. And again, they're also known as IGH on the interwebs acronym. If you're wondering what that stood for. Um, if you have one, Leave a comment and let me know what you like, what you don't like about it. If you don't, you know, if, you, if there's anything you don't like about it, you know. Uh, like I said, I'm considering it, but it's sort of expensive and, uh, oh man, it's all nasty up there. A lot of dust. I'm going to turn around. Screw this. Let's go over here. This is sort of where I came from this morning, past this uh, little shopping center here. So, uh, see you around. Woo, it's break. <laughs>